Thanks for joining me today, everybody. Welcome to the channel. This is Each One Reach One. I pray and I hope that I can teach and reach one of you with this lesson, Lord willing. All praise, honor, and glory belongs to my Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of the beloved Amashiach Yahweh Shai, who is the, the propitiation for our sins and the Holy One of Israel. I'm thankful for the ability to, to teach this today, to, to talk to you, to gather with you, you know, in spirit that is in hopes that uh one day I'll see you in the kingdom. That's what it's all about. You know, we're trying to we're trying to get there. We're working our way towards that that great day. All right. We're not working to earn it. We're just working while we're here until we get there. Because there there's nothing better that we can be doing or should be doing than striving to walk righteously for the great hope that is set before us. And with that said, the great hope that is set before us, Israel, you know, is the fact that we are destined to be made like unto our father and to our king, Yahweh Shai, who was the firstborn of many brethren. The example for us to look to, to see what is possible, what to set our sights on, what to set our hopes on. That's what our father did with Yahweh Shai. He set him in front of us and said, be like him, follow him, and then one day you will share in his inheritance, and I'm going to make you like him. I'm going to transform you from being my carnal children to being my spiritual children. And that is the great trial of Israel. We are exercised by many things in the lives that we live to try us in the fire, right? In the, the furnace of affliction and adversity to purge us of our dross so that we can be made gods. Yes, gods. What do you think we become when we become like our father who is God? What do you think we become when we enter into his kingdom spiritual beings he calls us his children children are like their father right all right so that shouldn't be hard to understand now i move to do this because i want to encourage and exhort and to make sure we're keeping our eyes on the so-called prize all right on the gift, which is a better way to put it. Keep our eyes on the gifts that are that are waiting for us, right? We're supposed to be storing up our treasures in heaven. What treasures are those? What are we supposed to be looking forward to? Godship, all right? I might name this Israelite gods. Let's start with Psalms chapter 82. One second. You know what? I don't normally do this, but something has occurred to me to, to bring up here. And I don't want to forget. I'm just going to make a note here to get into it. Now, you know what? I'm just going to go. No. Yeah, let's let's just start here. Sorry for the confusion. I'll start where I'm. I'll, I'll keep. I'll keep pace with where I was going. All right, Psalms eighty-two, verse six. I have said, "Ye are gods," and all of you are the children of the Most High. Now again, we know one hundred percent. Come on, Gentiles, stay stay with me. We know that this psalm was written by an Israelite, two Israelites, about Israelites, and for Israelites, correct? I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Constantly, we, we are told who the children of God are. From the beginning of the book, all right, we are given a genealogy that takes us through to who the children of God are. 
We know the children of God are the Israelites. So when he says, I have said, ye are gods, we know the ye refers to Israel. Ye are gods and all of you Israelites are children of the most high, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Right? We shall die like men, and that's what that's what we're happening. That's what we are enduring right now is having to go through the process of dying like men because it is not yet manifest what we shall be, all right? But we shall be made like unto our father, our power, gods. And it's not blasphemy to say so, all right? So we're going to go to John chapter 10, verse 34. Red letter. Yahweh Shai answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. And before I, I move past that, I just wanted to point out he's telling you that in the Old Testament, where this is written, it was him that was saying this. He's quoting it verbatim because it was him that said it in the Old Testament. It was him that was being quoted in the Old Testament. That's why he didn't say, Is it not written in in your law, and then make a reference to the father saying it. He quoted it verbatim to let us know that it was him that said it. All right? Ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, who did the word of God come to? It came to Israel. Israel was given the prophets, the laws, the statutes, the commandments, the oracles of God, the word of God was given to Israel. The word of God came to Israel. So we know that this is talking about Israel. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, this is important for the replacement theology believing Christians who believe that the Israelites can be, will be, and have been thrown away, cast away, and they have been adopted in. Meaning the Israelites were called gods, the children of God, and the scripture cannot be broken, meaning they Israel will never cease for being the chosen. Israel will never cease from being the children of God, never, because the scripture cannot be broken. Israel has always been destined to become gods. The scripture cannot be broken. It will be fulfilled. Israel has always been destined to become gods. All right? That is made clear. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. This is not a long one. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of Allah Hayyim. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of Allah Hayyim, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him, God for we shall see him as he is. Now, remember when Yahweh Shai said, in my father's house are many mansions. Remember, Israel collectively is the house of God. All of us, we are his temple and all of us are um, lively stones in that temple. We are all different rooms in that temple, but in his house, in his kingdom, in heaven, right? There are, there are many mansions. Mansions are homes, luxurious, right? Homes. And those mansions are bodies, heavenly bodies because the most high dwells 
in us, right? We are the temples. We are the tabernacles of the Most High. Those bodies that are waiting for us are considered mansions because those bodies are being compared to the bodies we're in now. You can call these old busted up shacks that we're living in now. But in heaven are many mansions, many heavenly bodies that are awaiting us. All right? Because we are the children of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be because we are not living in our mansions yet. We are still in these rickety shacks, these rundown buildings, right? These infested apartments, <laughs> these infested dwelling places that are in need of being cleaned up. We shall be gods. We are the children of the highest. The scripture cannot be broken. Israel is not cast away and forsaken. We have a great hope. A great hope. Listen to verse three. And every man that hath this hope in him. Because it has to be in you. Because through his spirit, he places this great hope within you. So you don't need to go to some church building and have somebody convince you of anything. You should all have this great hope in you. So every man that has this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. All right? And that's what we're doing now. Those of us who have this great hope in us, we are purifying ourselves, even as we are pure. Being made ready for those mansions. Being made ready to be made like unto our king. So that we can see our king as he is. No other people on this planet on this earth has this hope set before them that we do. Do not take it for granted. Be grateful. Be thankful. Be appreciative. Love him. Honor him. And do the things that glorify him on this earth. That's your reasonable service, your reasonable duty. It's the least that we can do. So cheer up. Don't be afraid of the things that are happening in this earth and the things that are to come because we have been not been we have not been given the spirit of fear. Wait upon him who has promised us redemption. Trust in that redemption. Because unbelief is evil. I pray that you guys are all armed with everything that you need in order to be found acceptable of him when he returns. Let's endure to the end, everybody. This thing is not over. And many tribulations and, and, and difficult things are going to come upon this earth. But don't be scared. Don't be Peter on the water. We're supposed to learn from that story of what happened with Peter. Our power is calling us out to walk on faith, believe in the impossible, believe in the things that shouldn't be possible according to the laws of this world. It shouldn't be possible to walk on water, to walk in the air, but Peter was doing it, but he was watching everything going on in his environment. He was watching the waves roaring and crashing. He was watching the wind boisterous and strong he got scared. He took his eyes off of Yahweh Shai. His fear overcame him. He slipped and he fell. But guess what happened when he did? Yahweh Shai caught him because he loved him and he's not going to allow you to fall. Stay strong, Israel. All praise, honor, and glory to the highest. Each one, reach one. Shalom.